Hey guys, welcome back. Last time we were able to create this bottom sheet and the user can click here and be able to open up this sheet to take a picture from camera or choose a picture from gallery. So what I want us to do now is implement a way for a user to pick a picture from gallery, also to take a photo from the camera. Now we are going to be using this library here called image crop picker. So the reason why we use this is it makes the process quite easy. It also has a built-in crop functionality. So we don't really have to code this one from scratch. I also want to mention that if you want to code like a camera from scratch, there's a library called react native camera. For example, let's say you wanted to build something like Snapchat or TikTok. So React Native Camera is a very robust library and most of the time it's going to be handling everything you want to handle. So maybe this is where you want to be. So you'll see that you can create any kind of layout that uses the camera. And yeah, so let's go back to uh, fish. So here we need to use this image we need to use this React Native Image Crop Picker. So first off, we are going to need to install it. Now, to install it, we need to run yarn add. So I'm gonna come down here where there should be install instructions. So I'm gonna copy this, and then can come over here in our terminal and run yarn add for that. Then we need to port for iOS. Then for iOS, we need to have these keys. So these keys enable us to tell a user that we want to use their camera and they can know really what we are about. So first off, we are going to need the key for the camera usage and also the micro, the camera usage and also the photo library usage definition to our info.plist. So we're gonna go to info.plist. I'm just gonna search for it over here, info.plist. So I'm going to have another key. So this key is gonna be for camera usage description. Now we can say the name of the app wants to access your camera. RN contacts wants to access your camera. Then we are gonna have the another one for the, let's check it, the one for accessing the library. So let's also update here. Then we can say wants to access your gallery like that. So after we are done here, then this run pod inside here, so yarn pod. So now that we have the pods, we have these keys in our info.p list, we can try using the library now. So what we'll do, we'll go to our component. Now on this on press, let's say the on press for the, for choose from gallery, we can now say image picker. Actually, we, <laughs> our component is called image picker. So let's first import it. Make sure we are importing it differently to, to not collide with our, our function name. So image picker crop. Since it's a default export, we can rename how we export it. So now here we can do that. Then we want to say open picker. So when you say open picker, then you can go ahead and specify some options. So the first option we're gonna have is how big we want that picture to be. So here you can do any any size so if you don't want to do any size then it's okay you can leave it blank since they are, they are not mandatory so let's also pass the height then if we want it to crop you're going to find yourself passing cropping to true when you say cropping to true then it's going to enable a user to crop but it won't let them it, it won't let the user to crop to any section of the of the image so i want to pass a freestyle crop enabled freestyle crop enabled also to true like this then you can handle when a user finishes picking so you can have like images here also let's handle the error when there is an error so error let's console it for now like this so if we try this out let's say we came over here let's make sure let's rebuild the app so you just run in ios again also, when a user picks an, a picture, we need a way to send it back to the component that basically showed the, the picker. So now it has come. If we come here and try to click here, you notice that it comes when we click, choose from gallery, nothing's happening. And that's because we are not handling the on press. So we want to come here on the touchable opacity. 
set our own press to the on press that's defined on the item like that so now if we come back click here and then click ch choose from gallery you see that the rn contacts would like to access your photos if you click ok it's going to open up the photos now here you can go ahead and select the picture then you see that we can be able to crop it and then you can click choose so now that we click choose you notice that it, this is not really hiding so from the component that opens up this model we need a way to be able to get the images that the user chose and also we need a way to close the the model programmatically when a user finishes picking the pictures so we're gonna go to our screen for create contact so i'm gonna come over here and define a method called on file selected so const on file selected so it's just gonna be a it's just gonna be a function that takes in the images that the user select. Then here we want to to close the model or the sheet. So we can do close sheet and then let's uh, console log the image like this. Okay, these are images. Then now we can send this method down to the child component then when we get to the child component that's going to be components then this one we can of course expect it okay so we can pass this to the component that picks the the pictures so we can come over here and say on file selected equals on file selected so in the component we can of course expect it to as props here then when we get it so now that we have it, every time a user chooses the pictures, we are going to be calling on file selected and pass those pictures back. So a user here is passing, is picking one image. So that's also, which is okay. But a user can pass, can choose many images here when you pass like multiple equals true. So for now, we're going to keep it like this. Now, when a user comes here, I'm going to go to on file selected where we defined it. So I'm going to go to the screen. So the screen will be here. Then when a user picks the pictures, we are console logging them. So let me bring up this. So here, if I come and say choose picture, then we say choose from gallery. Then we say, okay, I want to choose this one. It's gonna just go ahead and choose. You notice that we get some stuff logged here. Okay, so this is good. This is what we want. Now we need to also work on Android. But before we do that, let us be able to show the picture that the user has chosen and also I want to mention that when if you get an error, let's say you've set up this and it's not working fine for you. For example, you click here and then you click here and then the app maybe stops. You want to open your Xcode. Let me just get up Xcode and show you something. So Xcode. You want to open your Xcode, then open your project in Xcode. So when Xcode opens up, you want to go to build phases, then you want to come here where you have copy bundle resources then you want to add the storyboard file for the image picker so you can find that you can click here and then you go to so that should be in node modules so let's click add another then you can go here in node modules then you go to react native image crop picker so you want to go to the node modules ios qb image picker qb image picker and then you want to go and select QB image picker dot storyboard, which should be where is it? This one. Okay, so for now we won't be doing that because we are not having that issue, but it's common you get that issue for your simulator to stop every time someone clicks the text. So make sure you add that and then rebuild. If you if you try to rebuild here and it doesn't work, make sure you rerun the build down here in the terminal and it should be able to work fine. So for the camera on the iOS simulator, we can't really take pictures. So what we're going to do is now let's go ahead and work on the Android section and be able to set up the camera. But for the iOS, it will just work fine since we have already added the NS camera usage description in the info.p list. So for Android, if we come back to our guide. So for Android, we need this. We need to specify this. So most of the times this will already be added. This will already be added. So I don't want even this. We might not need to add it. But just check, make sure you have this already installed in your, already added in your Android project. 
So we the other thing we need to make sure we have is the Gradle version. So if we go to our Gradle, let me bring up build.gradle. So let's go to build.gradle. We're gonna check this one for Android. Then we want to check the this version here. So they say that we need a so they say that for this library to work, the build Gradle version should be Let's check, it should be minimum 0 0.5. So if you ever get issues with this, let's change it to this one here, the one that's already listed. Let's change this one to 4.0.1 and save it. Then I'm gonna open up Android Studio just to run this app on my device. So let me just get, actually I can just do yarn Android here. And since my device is already plugged in, it should be able to boot up there. So now that we change the Gradle version, it might take a while trying to sync with this new version or download anything it may need. Okay, so let's give it uh, a minute as it installs that Gradle update. Another thing is if we go to our image picker, let's go ahead and handle the picking of the picture from the camera. So I'm gonna copy all this because it's quite similar. Then I'm gonna go to this on press. So here we can duplicate it, but here we want to say open camera like this then save it. Everything else will be the same. All right. So on Android, you're going to need to specify permissions. If you want to use the camera, also you want to specify if you want to use the front camera, you want to be able to specify that you need to use that feature. So we're going to go to our Android manifest file and add this, this permission and also that uses feature definition. So here I'm going to go to Android manifest so I can just search for it, manifest. So if it comes up, then we can say we want to use the camera. Also, we can say we want to use the front camera. Also, we can say we want to use the front camera. So I'm going to copy this and bring it down here and also have this other feature for the camera defined. So I'm gonna copy it and also add it here. So now that we're done there, let's rerun the app. It's actually booting up already, but let me rerun it. And then let me bring up visor so we see what we have. Notice that we come here when I click choose image. Uh, let's say I click choose from gallery. So nothing is happening here. So when I click choose from gallery, nothing is happening. Now let's first make sure that we have a touchable opacity, the one that can be touched. So I'm gonna go back to our image picker. Then here where we have this touchable opacity, I'm gonna check where we're importing it. So first off, you'll notice that we're importing it from React Native Gesture Handler. Now this one from React Native Gesture Handler always has issues on Android. So you want to make sure you're importing the one from React Native. So save it. And now if we try again, let's say we click choose from camera, it's gonna show this alert, choose from gallery, it's gonna show this alert that it wants to use our, access our device. So if we click allow, then you see that it opens up the, the folders and we can go ahead and choose the pictures. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose, so I'm gonna go ahead, so I'm gonna pick, then I'm gonna go ahead and, and choose any picture here. So this is a picture of me. So I'm gonna choose it. We can crop it and then I will say, okay. And you'll notice that it can choose it. So let's go ahead and test the one for the camera. So if we click here and then say, take from camera, it will say it wants to record video or take a picture. If we say yes, you'll notice that it opens up the camera. So now you see that we uh, can access the camera and then maybe we can say, okay, take. And it's gonna take it now. Then if we confirm that we need, this is the one we want to take, we can say okay. And it's gonna go ahead and show, take us to a UI where we can crop it. So if we crop, it's also going to go ahead and select it. So right now we are not able to see what we selected and that's because we are not really updating the UI with the selected picture. So for us to do that, we will have an, a state that will keep track of what picture the user last selected. So we're gonna have a simple state for when we have the picture. Now, when a user finishes to pick a picture, we are going to close the sheet and then we are going to be updating this, the updating the, 
the file that the user selected with the one that gets passed in from our child component. Yeah, so here now we can send this one to our our child components such that we can be able to display it. So let's send it. Now, if we go to our component, let's say we come to the, here in this component, we can expect it. So let's expect it. Then here, instead of showing the URI to be the default picture, we're only going to show the URI when we don't have the local picture. So you can say, show the local picture dot URI, dot URI, or use the default one. So every time we don't have this, it's going to be using the default one. But every time we have this, it's going to be showing it. So now this is null by default. So we want to make sure we are not really accessing this when this is not there. So let's save that. And now this is has come back to have the URI. So I'm going to come here and console log the local file just so we be sure what we are working with. So let me also bring up our logs. So you notice that the local file has the path, then this other stuff. But what you're interested in is the path. This is the one that can be displayed. So here we can come and say, okay, show us the local file dot path if it is there. Otherwise show us the default URI. So you see that now it is showing the local path for the picture we selected. I'm gonna go ahead and choose another one. In fact, I'm gonna take one from camera just so we can test that. So I'll just screenshot, I'll just take a picture of this code in front of me. Then I will save it. I'll go ahead and click the this, <coughs> the crop. Then when it finishes, you see that it updates. Looking good. Choose from gallery and we can choose from gallery, I believe. So I'm just gonna go here and choose another picture of me. Then I will crop it. I will say, okay. So when this is done, you will see that it shows up on the UI. So this is it. This is gonna do it for now. So in the next video, I'm gonna come in and we're gonna start working with Firebase, setting up Firebase, the backend, syncing with the projects, and also uploading pictures to the back, to the Firebase storage. So thanks guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, remember to subscribe to the channel and I'll talk to you soon.